Okay, this is a little uh, supplemental video um, on the PARD 008 LRF. Uh, some things I've learned and Bruce has learned, some hints and tips. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of uh, a look of the rifle, uh, of the scope rather, in use and some, some tips um, for nighttime use um, and for supplemental IR. And then I'm going to splice afterwards um, comparisons from one of my permissions. Uh, daytime and nighttime in a barn uh, and then I'm going to splice after that some footage from the same barn recorded last winter in pitch darkness with a photon RT just for a comparison um, and because that was my only previous experience of having a night vision scope um, and then after that I've got oh the other thing in the barn is um, I've got some footage uh, comparing the using the LRF the vertical alignment beam against a vertical doorway panning back and forth so you can see how, how it reacts uh, panning up and down the the vertical beam up and down over a, a horizontal crossbar on the back of a, a, a tractor trailer um, so hopefully again useful for you um, and uh, and then there's going to be some footage from a paddock that I recorded at midnight on Friday um, and that's using the onboard IR on all three strengths and then using an add-on IR on different strengths just to, because basically because my previous um, PAR 008 and 008 LRF footage um, it wasn't the IR wasn't focused so that was my bad um, but basically it's not a, a clear representation of what it can do um, so okay let's get started okay so here's the PAR 008 LRF with the laser range finder module built in, very compact. Um, this is it mounted on my FAC Air Arms S510. Um, now, a couple of observations. Um, one is that the excellent uh, Shader 8, which our custom rifle scopes sells as an add on for the PAR 008, it's a very, very snug fit. It's perfect. And with this little dial, that's it fully open. And when you turn the iris, you can close it right down. The pad is so sensitive, the electronics in this fella, that when that's closed right down, you can still see through the image. It gets a bit grainy, and when you, if you have that iris partly open, it can improve the depth of field at nighttime, and it can also improve the contrast. If you're in bright sunlight, and I found this myself, trying to focus the the pad on double rate all the double rate lrf trying to focus them on a white target sheet and it all seems a bit a bit sort of too bright a bit blinding and you can no longer see the graduations and the pellet holes and such like so if you close the iris down say part way like so or slightly even slightly uh, smaller uh, from speaking to people on the uh, night vision forums and airgun bbs and airgun forum uk then uh, apparently this really really helps a lot of different situations so for 20 quid that's an excellent piece of kit um, you can see i've added a coaster to this one and i'll show you why in a second ash is now including free of charge custom rifle scopes a slightly more basic um shader without the iris and, and this is a Slightly, I would say, oh, it's, no, it's snuggish. It's decently snug, but it's not as snug as the Shader 8 is on the PAR 008. And apparently this is due to you, you guys, the customers, their feedback, they wanted it to be less snug. Um, so what I've added, you'll see here, if I rotate this around, I've added three quarters of the way around the objective focus ring. I've added some black electrical tape so that um, it makes the, the shade 8 a bit more of a snug fit um, on the on the pod the boy LRF right let's get it to there so anyway if I pop the shade 8 back on here excuse the shakiness right and that shit the, the, the coaster is slack if I tighten that up a bit, now the coaster is also rotating the focus ring. Now, straight away, 
those eagle-eyed amongst you will see with the coaster vertical it's going to block the onboard IR. The reason the coaster's on there because normally you don't need it because this this uh, sort of proud keyway replicates the existing one and with the shader in place lets you easily fine-tune the focus but uh, as you'll see from the footage towards the end of this uh, video um, I had an add-on IR torch I was uh, trying which came from um, Clive Ward at the night vision store and it's a I haven't got it here because Bruce has borrowed it to do some testing on it comparing to his own um, illuminators but basically I had that added on here with one of these, a Boris Signature Z ring, which is basically a one inch Picatinny ring, but it's got a slightly enlarged center and it comes with a, a, a split ring. And this lets you attach the, the Boris Z ring on here, tighten it up, pop on the uh, IR torch, angle it, and then using the two screws, tighten it, so you end up with, hopefully, with your IR torch matching your point of aim, at whatever your chosen range is. So with that, with an add-on IR on the side, it then becomes quite fiddly from the shooter's perspective at this end to reach round past, if you imagine the torch being here, it becomes about quite fiddly. So hence having the coaster to fine tune. Because after all, once the external IR is on, you have the onboard IR switched off, you're prolonging battery life, and I then adjusted your focus is, you know, between sort of 30 and 60 meters, 70 meters, you don't need to move this ring very much. So you can you can adjust the position of the coaster, and I'll I'll probably include links to the coasters below and all the other kit. Um, but basically with this vertical, you can fine-tune the focus without blocking the IR torch and without blocking the laser rangefinder. So that's my findings from using, from the practical hands-on using an add-on IR illuminator with the PAR 008 LRF. And uh, the PAR 008 would be the same if you have an external, like the LE032, if you had an external add-on rangefinder mounted on the PAR, the PAR 008 external Picatinny rail, then you'd have the same the same possible issue to overcome. So this is all from experience, and coasters cheap as chips. The multi-purpose daylight and nighttime excellent uh, shader eight is only twenty pounds, and via a little bit of electrical tape, it becomes a snug fit on the 008 LRF. So uh, right, hopefully that'll explain some of the footage that you'll see later on. Okay, next day, and uh, I am hoping to get this video online either tonight or tomorrow morning, but next day, and I reviewed the footage uh, I had so far for this video, I realised I forgot a few important things, so I'm going to add these in right now. So, one thing, um, people who are new to the PAR 008 or 008 LRF might take a minute to get used to, is um, the bracket is has been designed horizontal, so there is no angle to no MOA angle to allow for lowish powered rifles. So I dare say if you put the, the pad double eight or double eight LRF on a 17 HMR or 17 Hornet, um, then flat shooting would be no problem to zero. With air rifles, even FAC air rifles and um, rimfire, subsonic or not, um, you got such a trajectory that uh, an awful lot of us have found with both the PAR008 and 008 LRF, we found that um, when you uh, zero the reticle, the crosshair, ends up very low down, about here in the box, in the, the screen. So to avoid that, because basically if you're only looking at the bottom of the screen, um, you're seeing a lot of stuff you don't need to and you might be missing stuff further down in the foreground. Um, so shimming is the way to go. Shimming is the reason this can has been sitting here because I just butchered a can just last Friday night 
to get some thin pieces of shim, a couple of millimetres by about 10 mil, and had them in my wallet. And then when I was zeroing the, this rifle um, with a 008 LRF in the barn on Friday night, I used some shims. One piece of shim uh, folded three ways, so three ply if you like, uh, which Bruce then measured on Sunday as 0 0.7 millimeters thick, was enough to, underneath the back of the pad bracket, was enough to angle the back of the pad slightly upwards, which brings effectively brings the screen down and lifts the crosshair into the center, which is where you want it. Um, so that's what I did with my 008 and then my 008 LRF. Um, but there's a, there's a slightly cleverer way. I'll upload a photo and splice it in round about here. Showing the pad and its Picatinny adapter apart with a small shim in the channel exactly where it goes. Uh, but um, the, the cleverer alternative it was come up with by Bruce, and I'll also I'll also splice in a photo right about here. Of Bruce's uh, adapter, which uh, because the the par double LRF has five holes, so they're a bit closer together, and there's no longer enough space. Well, there's not so much space between them. Then. Um, He's used M3 holes, drilled an M3 hole, drilled and tapped M3, and then from underneath an M3 grub screw, um, screwed up through, and just to be literally that match that 0.7 of a millimetre proud, and that's a permanent shim. Plus it's adjustable. So if, if you use a different cartridge, or um, high powered or low powered, and your zero reticle was a little bit too far away from being in the centre of the eyepiece, uh, center of the screen, then you can adjust the uh, grub screw higher or lower to adjust the shim, shimming. So here we are looking underneath the tail end of the PAD 008 LRF adapter and you can see a single hole about where my fingertip is in between the two bracket mounting holes and that's where the uh, M3 grub screw is. I no longer need, with this, with the Power W LRF, with the laser rangefinder built in, I no longer need the Velcro on the side, which is for, to operate, the, to hold the um, add-on rangefinder's uh, remote on-off switch. With basically using the LRF, um, you press, a quick press on the golf flag button, um, activates the laser rangefinder, it displays, as you'll see on the eyepiece, uh, to, to the right of the reticle, and it goes off automatically after two minutes. So once you put it on, just ignore it. it it'll switch off by itself uh, once you don't need it anymore. And obviously, a longer press of the golf flag act, starts and stops the uh, PAD's um, HD recording function, day or night. So just to explain a bit further, the, um, the recommended... Um, IR Torch I've chosen is the uh, Blacklight Dark Engine, great name, from um, Night Vision Store in Clive Ward, who you'll know from some of the Night Vision and other airgun forums. Um, the, uh, I've got the, the Boris Signature Z clamps you've just seen. I'll put links to both below. And one of the thing, one of the, while this is a hints and tips video, one of the thing, um, Bruce was explaining to me because he knows more than I'll ever know about night vision. The 850 nanometer wavelength uh, dark engine is the one I've gone with because it matches very, very, very similar to the, the PARDS IR illuminator. Um, so, um, yeah, let's get framed. Right, so um, he says, and it might, there might be a little bit more of a red glow from the front that shouldn't really spook my quarry, but he said, keep an eye on it. Um, the alternative is the 940 nanometer wavelength blacklight dark engine, different wavelength of IR torch, which is more discreet, but not quite as in tune with the average night vision scope's electronics. 
So I've gone with the one that's going to provide the maximum illumination and I'm hoping that, um, on my permissions, that the, the red, faint red glow of the, uh, the IR illuminator on the rifle won't spook any of the quarry. So, uh, shimming the pad is pretty much uh, required for air rifle use or rimfire. Um, and you've got the Coke can version here behind me, or you have the, the version I just showed you, which is a lot cleverer and a bit more repeatable and adjustable. And that's the uh, grub screw version, M3. And there's not one alter another alternative. So this bracket is the ZB Lite Pro from customriflescopes.com and basically if I can show it to you um, so we have it slots onto a pick the rifles picatinny rail or picatinny rail adapter if you're using a dovetail um, as I am um, there's a recoil arrestor stud at one end and picatinny on top there's a hinge at the aft end and two turrets at the forward end and they've got this is the forward end because when you look at it there's your line by which you click the turrets against 